What's happening? What's happening? What's happening in the building? Um, thank y'all for sliding through tonight. I wanted to do a reaction video. I've been wanting to do reaction videos for some time now. So tonight's gonna be my first one. Tonight's show is brought to you by Cosmic Closet. We ain't even open yet, but by the time you watch this, you may be like, yo, I want to get some gear for Cosmic Closet. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. That 5 meo Bufo, we're going to have all of that. The Black King, you know, you ain't woke if you broke. That's just a placeholder, but, you know, we coming. Also, this definitely is being brought to you by Tybro.com. Um, they always my official sponsors. I'll probably come back over here and give y'all some recommendations of, like, where you can shop. And I want to give a big shout out to my peoples over at Decrim Nature. What up, Carlos and all of y'all? What up, Reggie? I see a lot of familiar faces in here. Carlos is in the building. Larry's is Larry in here? No, he's not, but it's okay. Let's get straight to what I wanted to talk about today. This is the Secrets of Spiritual Healing, part eight. I'm just gonna go ahead and get into it, press play, and then I'll be pausing at certain places because you really need to be paying attention to what Master Gibson is trying to tell you, all right? So I'm just going to zoom. Let me see. I'll probably be zooming out yeah, like that. I might even go all the way to the bottom. So, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be in between these two right here. So, yes, oh, of course, uh, work with OE.com. How in the world did you not um, gave a big shout out to yourself? Of course, it's definitely it's time for you to get serious about your magic. Um, if you're interested in joining the Inner Magic Academy, we got you. Strategy consultations. And if you don't know if you're right, if you have the right birth time, we got you because 85% of birth certificate times are inaccurate. Um, if you're interested in ceremony, everything you want to, everything you need, you want to say, oh, yeah, I want to get a ceremony. I want to understand about Bufo. Don't worry about these dates. All you got is January and February left. Um, the two day think tank, of course, I would. Tell everybody to go back and get the replay. I did this back in August. Um, and then I'm also having a, uh, a Condor Masterclass in um, in Austin on the 6th of February. If you are out here, you definitely should check out um, CondorCoach.com for sure. If you want to impact on more lives in this growing field of psychedelics, read this entire page right now. Um, so I've been, I was in this room. This was like my second training, master coach training. Um, but I really want to get into like what even led me here is this man right here standing on the stage about to represent his ancestors. And this one is like the function of karma. All right. Listen, please listen closely. Also, if you're in the comment sections, please drop your, um, Team Zodiac and City and State. I'm OE Sun, Team Taurus, Atlanta, Georgia. What it do? Where y'all at? Um, if possible, could I chat about nationality? If you don't have your spirituality, sure, I'll chat about nationality. If you don't have your spirituality in place or the person that you're learning nationality from doesn't know astrology, then you're being misled. So if you want to know about nationality, and the person can't tell you about astrology or candle magic, or they can't tell you about spirituality or tell you how to get out of imposter syndrome, then you should be leaving them all the way alone and don't even worry about nationality. Do I know a lot about nationality? I absolutely do, do, but I don't understand why you're not coming on here. We're talking about the secrets of spiritual healing. This is part eight, something you ain't never seen before. Ask the people who expressing about nationality, do they know Dr. Mitchell Earl Gibson? No, he does not teach nationality either, but he don't need to because you need to get your spiritual light right instead of worrying about nationality. Nationality sent me to prison, so that's something that you want to, like you asked me to talk about it. I, I, I really think it's a, uh, the ideal is ludicrous and ridiculous, especially if you don't have any money. All right. What up, Maria? Team Pisces down in Miami birthrights, how one could get in contact with you. If you want to get in contact with me, you can get in contact with me through workwithoe.com. But don't don't contact me about any nationality. What up, Team Sag in Danville, Virginia? I see Team Virgo in Orlando, Florida. Team Leo in Toronto. What up, Lance? 
How you feeling? Peace, peace, peace. All right, let's get to let's uh, get to it. Let's pause right there. He said divine karma. Divine karma. I'm going to get all the way down here in the corner. Divine karma is the first of five. This is what the creator gives you and you can't touch it. No healer in the world will be able to get rid of it if you have divine karma. Okay, there's not one type of karma. Does this make sense on a scale of one to 10? Please, everybody listening, just post in the chat room. Does this make sense on a scale of one to 10? That if you have divine karma and, and it's an illness that came from God, that there's no healer on the planet that can do nothing with it. Do you understand that? That's like, that was like one of the main reasons why I even did this video was because of I was just like, yo, let me catch up on Pops. And um, yeah, you can't do anything about it, all right? And no healer can. Let's move on. Hold on, listen to what he just said. He just said that, is this something that the creator is going to let you assist with? You don't do the healing and your peoples don't do the healing. Okay? So the divine karma, the creator has to say, yo, I'm going to let you help this person work this out. But when you're doing a spiritual consultation for spiritual healing, you have to, that's a, he says, the first thing you check for. Is the creator going to let me even get into this? Or is this out of my league? A lot of y'all go here and there and think everybody can do something for you. Or you can get all your crystals and your herbs and your tonics. But you are you, you, you have disassociated from the creator. You have disassociated from the creator. And you think that you can just do anything without permission. And you cannot. There's no sound? Do not say that. How do I? Okay. So then I have to, I have to switch the settings up. Absolutely. Oh, this is terrible. Come on, man. How do I? Oh, ah. what can I do? Let's see if we go with the end. Um, um, will you be able to hear it? Let's back it up one time and let me know. Can you hear it? You can hear. You can hear me, but you can't hear Dr. Gibson. Let's start over. Tell me. Can you hear me? Okay. He just said divine karma. Let's just stop there to see if you can hear this. Because if you can't, then it looks like I may have to start over and possibly download it and then play it. Do I know any remedy for dementia? Yes, call Dr. Amsu. How old are you when you're talking about uh, he, uh, healing for dementia? Did anybody hear the video? You didn't hear it. I'm not asking, can you hear me just fine? I'm asking, can you hear the video that I'm playing here in the screen? Let me take my face off. I'm asking, can you hear this video? Okay, I said no. All right. So what would I do to... Um, mm, so let me test drive something because this is this is good. Dr. Gibson was about to give some fire, but I can download it. I don't know why. I mean, I ain't gonna sit out here and trip because I'll snatch it. 
Yeah, I'll snatch it and just play it. But let's test drive something else real quick first. All right. Because I need to see. Um, can y'all hear some things that's out here? So I'm going to just pull a video up that's got some sound on it. And y'all let me know if you can hear it. All right. Find something. Oh man, this is old right here. Angela. What's up, everybody? This is Coach Kair. I got Dre up in the building with me, Mr. Jones is in the building. We're waiting on Dr. B serious. He's ready to fall through here in just a hot second. And um up here he comes. He nominated four times. And um, I was living a life that wasn't my life because I started out doing jazz. And so let's hold on for a second. Now I want to know, can anybody hear this new video? Can y'all hear the new video? That's all I need to know because I don't even because I can pull it down from YouTube and let it play. So is that is that the case? Can y'all can y'all hear this? Just give me a Mike Chizek. Oh, the sound comes through? Oh, well, then y'all ain't said nothing. We definitely about to get yeah. into the game. Ooh, hold it. Where did this? I'm looking for this. Uh... Where is this download at? So then I can just take um I can take Dr. Sirius out of here. That's an old that's an old video. Don't y'all worry about that. Okay. Mm. Thank y'all so much for um definitely uh keeping it hot. I'm definitely about to play a new video. Um as soon as I can find out exactly where I put it. All right. So thank y'all for being so patient. And let me see if it's in the downloads. And I don't see it right now in the downloads. So I do not know where it is at, my friend. Um that is not what I want. So why does it say downloaded? If it is downloaded, then I'd like to find it. Let's try this again. Ah. No, I don't want to remove from downloads. I just want to know where is it. I love experiment in real time. Hmm, quite interesting. I'm trying to figure out where it's at, fam. I downloaded it. Did I take it to the desktop? Is that where it's at? I definitely don't want it to be on the desktop, but it could be. Um, it is not. Where's the most, where's my most recent, where are my things being downloaded at? Normally they would just be in the download category. You know, I do not know why that is. Why do you think that is? You know? What if we do it by type? I was definitely told that you could um, like look at things by type. I think it's by the application. That's the previews, quick time player. 
Boy, it's a lot of stuff on here I need to download. To, I mean, I need to delete. I really appreciate y'all for being patient. And I'm trying to figure out what in the world did I uh, do with that? That's not even cool. Peace and blessings, Team Aquarius in Indianapolis. Where is it going if it's not being downloaded? That's the, that's the part that I am... Um, not like super fascinated with i just want to know where'd you go if you didn't download where is it at ain't this something let's do a refresh and see what happens brother this isn't a video about snake venom so I think that you should get in contact with Brother Sincere or Brother Nighthawk because I don't have um, I don't have what you're looking for. If it's downloaded, then where is it? That's what I want to know. Um, I'm not as excited as I was. Right now, I'm just trying to give y'all something to see my teacher. And I can't even do reaction videos. This sucks. Well, what's going to happen is we're going to... Um, I'm going to figure it out. I want all the smoke out here when it comes to these downloads. I just want to know where they went to. Ain't it something when you right in the middle of something and you trying to press on uh, then you don't even see it, what you're looking for. Well, I don't know what to tell you. It's getting hot. And I thought I was going to be finished with this. It's only a six minute video. Do y'all have any questions that y'all might have while I'm on here? Because I definitely appreciate you for um, being in the building. Um, I'm so confused right now. Why is it that I can't um, either watch the download? And then it's acting like it's trying to be downloaded. Is, is that the right noise? Did you just? just download it so thank y'all for being so patient essence you smart now we about to get in now we about to get into some real live um download since we just got it and here we go there are five main types of karma that we work with in the system that i was trained divine mm -hmm. karma Okay, can y'all hear that? Now, let me know, can y'all hear that? He's talking about divine karma. Oh, we only been on here 19 minutes. We good to go. Can y'all hear it?
Okay, let's go. I have lots to say about this. There are five main types of karma that we work with in the system that I was trained. Divine <laughs> karma refers to the type of karma that's given to you by the Creator. You can't touch it. It's like it's called your hard karma. Divine karma was given to you by the Creator. This is number one. All karmas aren't the same. Can I get all of y'all to type that in the chat? All karmas aren't the same. He's about to explain five of them. He's about to explain five of them for you. Okay? I'm going to go over here and try to get another download. Because you might need number nine. This was recorded in 2007. This was recorded in 2007. Okay? All karmas aren't the same. There's five different kinds. The first one is the divine karma. If a person has an illness related to hard karma, no healer in the world is going to be able to get rid of it. It's something that, that, that the creator decrees that that person is going to go through. And that's the first thing you check for when you're doing a spiritual diagnosis. Is it something that you can fix? Is he said when you're doing a spiritual diagnosis, the first thing you need to ask is, is it something that you can fix? Stop thinking that everything can be fixed. The creator allows the healing, okay? That's his point. The creator allows healing. So you don't just get to go in there and just be like, I need to do something about it. Is it something that the creator is going to allow you to be able to help that person with? Is the creator going to allow you to help this person? Planetary karma relates to where that person lives in the world. If a person lives in the United States, or in the Congo in Africa, that one relates to a specific type of healing energy, the other relates to a negative type of energy, simply because of where that person lives. In the Congo, a person has a much shorter life expectancy because of the presence of that type of karma than the average person living in the US. Archetypal karma refers to the type of karmic energy related to a person's overall design. Each of us is built to do a certain thing very well. You hear him talking about their design? And we be talking about human design? This was from 07. I didn't even have any information on human design until 2010. He ain't here talking about what's your overall to design? Teacher, doctor, lawyer, businessman, housewife, mom, dad, whatever the case may be. Each of us has a certain propensity to do a certain thing well. The closer a person is to their prime archetype, their most uh, perfect archetype, the healthier that person will be. Stewardship karma relates to the type of karma related to things that a person owns, how much money they have, the things that they own, the type of home they're likely to live in. Stewardship karma also determines to a large extent what type of illnesses a person will get. Stewardship karma determines what type of illness you will get. Let, I think we're going too fast. Let's back it up one time. This one this only six minutes long. The type of karma related to things that a person owns, how much money they have, the things that they own, the type of home they're likely to live in. Stewardship karma also determines to a large extent what type of illnesses a person will get. People that are of a, socio, of a certain socioeconomic group are well known in research not to get some illnesses that people in a lower socioeconomic group. That's direct, di directly related to karma. Personal karma has to do with personal lifestyle choices that a person makes. The type of clothes that you wear, the type of job you tend to do, how much sleep you get, the type of food you put into your body. Why is Hey, hey, personal lifestyle karma. Personal lifestyle karma. What kind of clothes you wear? What kind of food you putting in your mouth? The type of clothes that you wear, the type of job you tend to do, how much sleep you get, the type of food you put into your body. Wise karmic choices allow the body to remain healthy longer and avoid negative spiritual energies. So what do you think is the most single, unhealthy karmic choice a person can make? What would you guess? No, you know. Smoking. That's a very good guess. Even more negative than that. What's more negative than smoking? What do y'all think is more negative than smoking? What do you think is more negative than smoking?
That's a good one right there. What's more negative than smoking? The most negative karmic choice a person can make, more than just murder. He said more than murder. So smoking is not it and murder is not it. What do y'all think it is? I'm over here. I mean, I don't know everything he talks about. I have to go back and watch some of these old videos too. More than suicide. Come on, Doc. Worse than suicide, worse than murder, and worse than smoking. Jeez. I wonder what it could be. This is this is a toughie right here. Hmm. I don't know. Let's find out. This is the type of choice that can follow a person from one lifetime to the next. For he said, what? Dozens of lifetimes. This is the type of choice that can follow a person from one lifetime to the next for dozens of lifetimes. Do you know that the karmas can follow you? So there's different types of karmas. And then this one that he's about to tell us can follow us through different lifetimes. Who, who knew? That's getting warm. Who said that? Ignoring the dictates of your soul. That's warm. Ooh, ignoring the dictates of your soul. No, there's, there's, there's nothing. Can I drop the teacher? Can I drop the teacher? 100%. My bad. There you go right there. <laughs> I definitely didn't mean Dr. Master Mitchell Gibson from of Tybro. I'm going to go back and show you the website in a second. Choosing to hate the creator. Choosing to hate the creator. Tina, what do you mean if we don't do debt, karmic debt cancellation work? What is that? Do you know how to do karmic debt cancellation work? How do you cancel karmic debt if you hate on the creator? I cannot tell you how many of my clients as a psychiatrist I've seen when you really look at their illness and you start to talk with them about their lives, they'll talk with you about childhood, they'll talk with you about their marriages or about their job, but when you really start to dig to the core where their illness is, they'll blame God for it. They'll say that he doesn't love me, that he's punishing me, that he's sending all this negative stuff to me. And if you really push them, they'll tell you what they really think about God. It's a very unhealthy karmic choice to choose to hate the creator. He said jokers don't even have accountability. You know, I got to talk about my man, Kevin Samuels. Why in the world? He said people don't even want, they don't want to say, yo, it's my fault. They'll blame God for their illness. Ooh, back it up. I don't know if y'all heard it or not. Back it up. All this negative stuff to me. And if you really push them, they'll tell you what they really think about God. It's a very unhealthy karmic choice to choose to hate the creator. Because if you don't like the source of your own creation, by default, you're attracting to yourself negative energy. And when you if you don't like the source, let me get up here beside my teacher. He says, if you don't like the source, if you don't like the source, a very unhealthy karmic choice to choose to hate the creator because if you don't like the source of your own creation by default you're attracting to yourself negative energy by default if you don't have a likable arrangement and relationship with the creator you're going to attract negativity isn't that interesting did you ever think about that that that's a possibility. And why not if you haven't thought about it? That's what I'd be saying. And when you look at people who are the sickest, especially with mental illnesses, probably 95 plus percent of them, if you really look at their illnesses, they will talk to you specifically about hating the creator. The next thing they do, and several people said this, is that they're willfully destructive toward themselves or others. Often people who make unhealthy karmic choices are destructive people. They will quite often to hurt themselves or other people knowingly and not stop. They will continue doing it. 
you may know of a person who's close to you or someone you know, that you know of, that's in a relationship. And you know that relationship is destructive to them. But if you try to force them to leave, they won't leave. Because they are under the grips of a negative karmic choice. Quite often, people that make these type of choices will also frequently entertain negative thoughts. They just feel down a lot, and you can't push them to create positive choices. They often speak in a negative or a foul manner on a regular basis. They use, Who's, use curse words. They use curse words. He said they're always talking foul about something. Listen. Negative thoughts. They just feel down a lot, and you can't push them to create positive choices. They often speak in a negative or a foul manner on a regular basis. They use curse words. Well, curse words create detritus. Curse words create detritus. Curse words create detritus. How do you know? Because I curse so much and I have so much detritus, it's so hard to remove detritus. You don't know what detritus is, do you? That's why you should be studying Mitchell Gibson. So you know what detritus is. You didn't even know that detritus was a thing. So all this profanity that we continually using, because we want to say, I want to give it, I want to get my point across, but you're not getting your point across. You are making a negative choice. Let's back it up one more time, because you might not be listening. I know some of you want to defend your cursing. On a, on a scale of one to 10, how much do you, how much profanity do you use on a regular, just regular, not like trying to curse somebody out. Just like in, during the day, I need to I need to put some uh, profanity in my life on a scale of one to ten. How long? How much cursing y'all doing? If you don't like the creator, you simply don't love yourself. If you don't like the creator, you are attracting some bad stuff. Yes, you will attract negativity. Sensei, what's up, God? Man, I'm just out here sharing my teacher with the world right now, Dr. Mitchell Earl Gibson. And we are here talking about this is um this is a, a workshop. He did this at the 2007 International Science and Consciousness Conference in Santa Fe, New Mexico. All right, right. How much of y'all is sensei? We know you curse at like a nine or eight and a half, something like that. But anyway, let's let's back it up. Sensei just got here. Let's let's get it in here. You or someone you know that you know of that's in a relationship, and you know that relationship is destructive to them. But if you try to force them to leave, they won't leave because they are under the grips of a negative karmic choice. Quite often, people that make these type of choices will also frequently entertain negative thoughts. They just feel down a lot, and you can't push them to create positive choices. They often speak in a negative or a foul manner on a regular basis. They use curse words. Well, curse words create detritus. Ignoring the plight of others who are less fortunate than yourself. Ignoring the plight of others less fortunate than yourself. <sighs> what, what a big one right there. Mm. Now you might say, if a person's outside and, the, and, and it's a street person, and I give them money and they go by, right back to the street, there's nothing I can do about that. But you can, you can say a simple prayer for that person. You can say a prayer for a person who's being affected by war. Ignoring that person or ignoring those entities creates a negative complex of thought in your subconscious that attracts glyphotic force. One of the more negative aspects of things that you can do that are extremely negative uh, karmic choices is practicing the dark, art, dark arts. That means teaching people how to kill and hurt others through negative spiritual forces. That's a thriving business, by the way. I'm surprised every day by the number of people that call me that are genuinely having to deal with that. I think in part because of the internet, they're easier to find. It used to be you had to know somebody, but now you can put in certain words on the net and you can find somebody that will do just about anything for a buck. So I think the net helps with spreading that. I also think there's just more of them. Ah, oh, my, my, my. You know, that was straight delectable. I want to even, 
I think I have the next one. Number nine. I knew this was going to come up. I'm going to just watch another. What's this one? This is a few more minutes. This one is seven minutes. Another very negative karmic choice is impeding the spiritual growth of another person. That summons or draws one of the negative glyphotic forces to a person. If one person's on a path and their spouse or loved one or family members try to stop them, that creates negative energy that will make that family sick over time. Hey, hey, did you hear what he said? I don't think y'all listening. Let me back this thing up one more time. Or draws one of the negative spiritual growth of another. He get ready to talk about the haters. Do any, do, do any of y'all have any haters? Because that's what he about to talk about. He about to talk about your haters. Another very negative karmic choice is impeding the spiritual growth of another person. Isn't that a hater? Impeding the negative, impeding the growth of some. Let's one more time. Who thinks this is a hater? Another very negative karmic choice is impeding the spiritual growth of another person. Is that a hater or not? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. That summons or draws one of the negative glyphotic forces to a person. If one person's on a path and their spouse or loved one or family members try to stop them, that creates negative energy that will make that family sick over time. Also, willfully maintaining a state of spiritual ignorance. Willfully maintaining a state of spiritual ignorance. I, I've seen every, almost, I've probably seen everything that he has on the internet. But this was in 07. I could talk about where I was at in 07. What were you doing in 07? This juggle was at the International Conference of Science and Consciousness. 07. Definitely he was probably one of the only five black people there. Don't count his wife. What were you doing in 07? This is only, he, he's only at 28 seconds. That creates negative energy that will make that family sick over time. Also, willfully maintaining a state of spiritual ignorance. Willfully maintaining a state of spiritual ignorance. Why, why would somebody say, I'm willfully going to stay spiritually ignorant? Coming into the world and deciding that I'm just not going to do anything. That <laughs> causes negative illness to be attracted to a person on a regular basis. Now, what are some of the good karmic choices a person can make? Now, these are the choices that help keep a person healthier. Learning to pray often and developing a personal relationship with the Creator. Learning to pray choices a person can make. Now, these are the choices that help keep a person healthier. These are the choices that make a person healthier. Pay attention. Write these down. Learning to pray often. and Learning to pray often. Developing a personal relationship with the creator. Developing a personal relationship with the creator. Not glyphotic forces. By every third word coming out your mouth being profanity. I'm, I, I'm the worst. Because I know better. So I'm supposed to do better. A lot of people never heard this before. They never heard of like glyphotic forces. They don't know what that is. So you got to get into your Kabbalah, okay? Get into your Torah, your Tanakh. There's a lot of research studies, and uh, Dr. Doss is probably more expert on this than I am, that show that prayer is a healthy, positive healing energy. People that pray often live longer, and they don't get sick as often. As a matter of fact, people that simply go to church live on the average five years longer than people that don't congregate for spiritual purposes. Refraining from destructive thoughts and actions towards yourself and others. Just not thinking about yourself in negative ways helps. Positive thinking has been shown for the last 30 years to help people get rid of high blood pressure, diabetes, heart trouble, and in some cases, it may not cure the illness entirely, but it helps mitigate the symptoms. Simply thinking about yourself in positive ways on a regular basis. That doesn't mean once or twice a month to say, I'm a really nice guy. 
It means meditating on a regular basis on the positive aspects of who you are as a person. Just for a few minutes a day has been shown to really help with a person's health. How many of y'all do that? Let's, let's have a conversation. How many of y'all have, you know, sit down a couple times a day and say, I'm a great person? Do you sit on a scale of one to 10? What are you doing? Are you sitting down saying I'm a great person three or four times a day, thinking good thoughts about yourself? Giving to others who are less fortunate than you are. Giving to others who are less fortunate. I think I did been doing that my whole life on YouTube. Right. We're about to switch over though. In the Kabbalah, they teach that there are four main gates of the force of the Sephiroth that can come into your life. One of the gates is the, is the gate of tithing or giving. When you give to people, it opens up energies from the higher worlds that will help you, especially if that person is less fortunate than yourself. I asked one of my teachers, why do we have to give 10%? What does that mean? Is it just for the benefit of the church? I mean, is it just for the benefit of a nonprofit organization? Why is that necessary? Why do people teach this? And my teacher said that, imagine, Mitchell, if you gave a bushel of apples, a rotten apple. Perfect bushel, perfect healthy bushel of apples, and you place a rotten apple inside of it. What's gonna to happen to that bushel? I said, well, it's gonna rot more quickly. And if you take the rotten apple out, the bushel is gonna be more, it's gonna last longer. I said, well, how does, that reply, how does that apply to human nature? How does that apply to giving? He said, well, what are the main ways that people have made money in this world? What's the most profitable thing that we do as humans? <laughs> Drugs are number two. <laughs> the most profitable thing we do as humans is war. War is extremely profitable. You can sell guns to both sides. If you go in and take a country's land, you then have prime real estate that you didn't have to do anything, anything for. And we've been doing war for a very long time. So war is one of the main ways we make money. Drugs is another. Slavery is another, that still goes on. Prostitution, gambling, those are the big five ways that human beings create wealth. Well, if you take that fact back through human history for 5,000 years or so, you find that a lot of money has been through those hands. All the money that each of us gets has been touched in some way by that aggregation of wealth. In Las Vegas, they weigh money by the pound. They don't count it mm. individually. Mm. So that when they want to check out as far as how much money they made for that day, they put money on a crate and they put it on a scale. That's how much money they make. Mm. So that each of us, when we receive money, it's been tainted a little bit by either war, gambling, prostitution, sex, drugs, whatever. So that when you keep all of that money, when you don't give away some of it, you keep all of that negative force. Hold on. Who in here is tithing? Who has tithed lately? Come on, man. Who, <laughs> since they say I used to do that, I know that's right. Who has tithed lately? Who believes in, who even believes in tithing? This, yeah, I don't want, don't tell me whether you tithe or not lately. Do you believe in tithing? Do you have a tithing account? That's the crazy part. Do you have an account that you're going to give away that's tithing? Quite interesting, huh? I love these, I, I love these conversations like this. Mm. Now, an example of that is a person that wins the lottery. Oh, she says, "Yeah, I give where I'm spirit, where I'm fed spiritually." That's not tithing. When you give where you are fed spiritually, that's not tithing. Okay, that's you giving. That you're really compensating where it's coming from. Tithing is not a compensation. 
if if I'm feeding you spiritually and you give me some money, you're not tithing. It's not tithing. No. Before the person wins the lottery, they have X amount of this negative force in their life. If they win $365 million, that force has been multiplied 365 million times. If they keep it all, what tends to happen? 90 plus percent of people that win a large amount of money will either end up in jail, dead, or broke in two years. Now you would think that a large amount of money would help a person, but understanding it spiritually and what that energy means shows us that by con containing a lot of that negative gephotic force in one area, that energy gets to work on you. So you might say, well, I don't make any money. Time is a blessing that each one, each one of us has. Mm. So you can give away a little bit of your time. Mm. You can give away a little bit of your efforts or your work energy. Mm. In that way, that glyphotic force doesn't get a chance to build up in your life. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He says you got to give it away. He ain't say like, oh, you're, you're giving me something, so now I give you something. That's conditional love. That's not, uncon that's, that's not unconditional. Yep. Money is one way that glyphotic energy enters into our lives. There's a few others on the list. Um, the one that I wanted to point out was learning to take in sunlight. There is a specific way. How many of y'all, he's just going so fast. He done skipped over to like taking in, now he's talking about taking in sunlight. You said, I tend to give to the less fortunate over the more established. Tithing is bigger than Christianity. It is. Taking in sunlight. If you're not taking in sunlight, please pay attention. We're going to close out right here. That's taught in Taoist traditions in the Kabbalah in Hindu and in, in certain Hindu traditions and certain Tibetan, Tibetan Buddhist traditions that teaches you how to take in sunlight so that you can get direct sephirotic energy specifically into your body. It's like building up the battery of your soul so that your soul becomes a stronger healing mechanism. There's a way to do that. One of the most profound and powerful traditions of the world that taught us how to do that were the Essenes. The Essenes were masters at taking in sunlight. Working on the process of enlightenment, not just the process of becoming a better spiritual being, but actually working on enlightenment is an excellent karmic choice. Working on enlightenment is a excellent karmic choice. Working on enlightenment. I want to thank you all so much for coming through. Appreciate you. Where did I get these videos from? You can get it right over here. Secrets of Spiritual Healing, Part 9. You want to check out Dr. Gibson, you can go over here to Tybro, T-Y-B-R-O.com. He was asking about who he is. There he is. And I took that picture. Yes. Super proud about that. Um, lots of, uh, lots of good, lots of good jewels out here. Um, I would start off with the medal. I would start off with the audios and just like look at all the audio downloads because it's such a um, such a catalog. I mean, the catalog is super, super, super profound um, for these for this for this audio. I definitely could be talking about this for days on and weeks on and stuff like that. So uh, for sure, check out the audio files over on Tybro. Don't worry about whether it's $99 or $19. There's some, there's some free ones on here too, the spell of Ra, but everything on here is, is absolutely worth it. Um, I definitely want a bigger shout out to this webinar that is coming up, an introduction to rapid soul preparation webinar. Um, this is the 31st of this month, I think. Yeah, I'm not even going to do a whole bunch of reading 
Yes, January 31st. It's 11 to 12 o'clock. Yes, it is $150. These pretty much is how I stay in the game, right? Um, I'm going to just let y'all go back through and just read it. So, um, do your homework, all right? And, of course, your boy, O.E. Sun, Cosmic Closet is coming. The T-shirts are on the way. I'm going to be outfitting y'all. Get ready. And if you are want to know what O.E. Sun is doing, you can definitely come over here, spiritual strategist and concierge. It's time to get serious about your magic, astrology, human design, candles, tantra, strategy, moon magic, etc. Turning your inner magic, turning on your energy magic is like being the new kid in the martial arts class. It can be scary at first, but if you stick with your practice and stay with the fundamentals, one day you'll be a master. All right. I definitely appreciate all of y'all for. Um, sliding through this evening, you know, and checking me out. The Body of Light audio is fire. How can I reach you more? Reach. Everybody says they want to reach me, but what you you already have. <clears throat> if you're on my mailing list, that's how you reach me. So what is the thing? Like most of my people, I'm going to tell you the easiest way to reach me is if you're in my class. My students is my number one priority. Okay. So what was that? Yeah, I want to, um, I definitely want to share that real quick. So the fastest way to reach me is by being one of my students. If you're not one of my students, then you got to stand in line behind my students because my students support me. This is where we train at microcosmic orbit meditation, writing your goals, prosperity 365, moon magic 28, keep a simple astrology course. And all of the replays are over here on this private, <laughs> over here on this private, um, private list. So probably the last three years of Wednesday night classes are all recorded over here. So this is where I go in and um, chop it up with my students. And on Wednesdays, this is the fastest way to get in contact with me. Yes, a lot of y'all do have my number because you can just go here, click on this button, and you can send a message. All right? That's the fastest way. All right, appreciate you too, Charles, Yvette. Thanks, everybody, for sliding through. Um, I'm OE Sun, Team Taurus. I found you in peace, and I'm going to leave you in prayer. Nice big inhale. Slow exhale. Mm. Anna Bacoa, Gijalaki Minka, Tatia Tezera, Kabel Renata, I'm Chasag Venu, Tahara Nanara, Nagibor, Doshe Yikadega, Kavavasham. Welcome to our Maraca May to Zika Taka to meet Gammy. Kasin Kadosh, Baru Tufka, Nahel Lana Taka. The Kid Gehelam Chapanez or Craig Katuska Taka. Shavata Nuka Belushma to Zaka to New Year Day at Alamo. Brukshem Kavomakuto, Lalam Vaye. Peace.